What do you want? What should I say? What do you need? You haven't noticed that people have such a difficult time with that word? Need? It's like it's a house on fire and they're fleeing with their hands up in the air screaming holy terror. They hate the word need. It's like the worst thing that you can say. But I ask them to think about it simply without all the intellectual kerfuffle. Do you need good food? No, seriously, do you need good food? Or do you just need average food? Do you need healthy food? Or can you get by with just McDonald's? Because we know that you need food, right? Unless you're a breath air in. But do you need good food, healthy food? Well, if you only have just average food, you have an average life. Because the energy is average. Right? But do you need to have an average life? An okay life? Or do you need to have a thriving life? Because if you start eating great food, really healthy food, you can start to thrive. Because you're just getting better energy and your body feels better. Your heart, your mind, your soul, it all feels better. Do you need to feel better? Or you need to just get by? Do you need to thrive? I'm in charge of a lot of people. I sit at my desk and people come and go. I give a lot of interviews. I evaluate thousands of people. You know what strikes me as the most interesting? is the lies that people tell themselves it's so creative and inventive. One of the great lies is that people don't need anything. And you push them a little bit. Do you need love? And that's a hard one for people to answer. He cheated on me. He was a narcissist. He even verbally abused me. No, I don't need love. I don't need love. I'm healthy and whole and complete and fulfilled by myself. We don't need other people. That's a good one. I appreciate your passion. You've got such great conviction there. You've got everybody convinced. Except for me, and you, you're not convinced. That's why you get so gung-ho about it. I don't need anybody, goddammit! <laughs> I don't need anybody! <laughs> Would you like another tissue? Yes, please! <laughs> Obviously, you don't need anyone. You goddamn right I don't! <laughs> Can I go now? 
No, you can't go now. I want to go. I'm tired of this evaluation. I just want to go home. I don't need anyone. You're going to go home and be alone, aren't you? Yes! You fucking cheated on me with that whore. He broke your heart. Yes! He broke my heart. It's exactly what he did. After he abused me, he fucking abused me, you fucking narcissist. He abused you? Yeah! How did he abuse me? You, excuse me. How did he abuse you? He didn't text me? He didn't text you? Yeah! He didn't text me! Like, like, how often did he, did you, I mean, how often did you want him to text you? He needs to text me at least twice an hour. And twice an hour? Yes! And he left you. Yes! He left me for that fucking slut! Did he leave you because of what? Did that you were saying that he should text you twice an hour? He said I was being too needy, mister. How can I go now? Not yet. Well, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I don't need anyone that's needy. That's what I learned. Well, uh, firstly, you gotta, you gotta slow down. You gotta, <laughs> there's some things that are all caught up together. First of all, where is it written in the great rule book of life that he needs to text you twice an hour? He has a job, I'm guessing. He can't just stop his job to text you. It doesn't matter. Okay, this is what you don't understand. This is some kind of psychologist, whatever you are. When people love each other, they text at least twice an hour. Only a narcissist would not text you at least, at least twice an hour. So yeah, that's abuse. That's abuse. Now can I go? Well, remember we have the agreement that the interviews last a minimum of 30 minutes. That's abusive. You're being abusive. Nah. <laughs> no, I'm not being abusive with you. That was the agreement. 30 minute interview, you get your stipend once a week. That's all we ask of you. We're conducting a study on intimacy and relationship between men and women. What's called polarity. Yeah, I know about polarity. You do? Yes, of course. Oh, all right, well. Please tell me your understanding of polarity. Okay, Doc. It's when guys and girls get together and they feel good. They feel really good together. That's your understanding of polarity? That's the gist of it. Do you understand anything more about polarity than that? I don't need to. That's, that's the essence of it. Okay? Okay? Hmm. Okay, alright, well... We're not gonna belabor that issue, but... There's more to it than that. Yeah, I know, there's more to it than that. There is always more to it than that when you're talking to fancy pants people. Okay? That's what you do. You make things complicated. Well, that's not even complicated. What you're saying is just too simple. I mean, I, I don't mean to be offensive, but a seventh grader could have said that. You're a grown woman. Okay. Okay, do not, you know, and sign up to be overtly abused. <laughs> Ma'am, this is an interview. I'm acting respectfully and professionally toward you. There's no verbal abuse. I feel verbally abused by you, okay? And you can't argue with my experience of you. You can't argue with this. Yes, I can.
no, okay, my experience is my experience, okay? My experience is, 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 is sacred. You don't get to tell me what I'm feeling, okay? I, I didn't tell you what you're feeling. I told you that you're not being verbally abused by me. Yes, I know that, but you are verbally abusing me right now. Right now, this is verbal abuse. No, it's not verbal abuse. I'm sorry, you're under a misconception. I'm disagreeing. I'm providing a different perspective. But I'm not verbally abusing you right now. Oh, God. You talk just like he talked. Well, maybe he was trying to show you something. No! No! He was not trying to show me something. He was not texting me. How could he even show me something if he wasn't texting me? Ma'am, that has nothing to do with what I'm talking about right now. Besides, he's not going to be showing you anything in those texts. That's right. Because he didn't text. Well, all right. Well, you're, you're jumping around. Stop with it. You're gaslighting me right now. I'm not gaslighting you. I'm telling you what you're doing. You're leaping from one subject to the next. Well, you know, that's fine. I mean, I can take all of this and use all of this data, but I gotta say that, well, I think it's rather clear why he was not happy in the relationship. Oh, God. You're one of those guys. You, you're an abuser, aren't you, Mr. Doctor? Mr. Psychologist, you're an abuser. Is that why you you call all these people in here? Give them a stipend? So that you can abuse them? No, that is not why I call people in here. Yeah. Yeah, it is. You're an abuser. And I'm gonna tell my friends. And I'm gonna tell everybody. You're gonna get cancelled. We're gonna cancel you for being abusive. Mm. Before you cancel me, young lady, for being abusive, I want you to consider something. <laughs> I'm actually just a nice guy conducting an interview. And that your behavior right now is probably what killed the relationship with your man. He's probably not a narcissist. He's probably not an abuser. And he probably left you. Because you were kind of abusive toward him. Tell me, when he didn't text you two times an hour, how did you treat him? I read him the right act. Okay. I let him have it. I told him a new asshole. Mm -hmm. So you were abusive toward him when he didn't text you twice an hour? Yeah. Because he wasn't texting me. Do you understand what I'm saying? He was not texting me, so I was... I was... I had the right to tell him a new asshole. Okay, if someone doesn't text you and show you that they love you at least twice an hour, you can be abusive. You've earned the right to be abusive. Okay. So people have to earn the right to be abusive? Yeah. They can't just be abusive. Hmm. Well, this is a very fascinating conversation, man. I'm enjoying it very much. Thank you. I just want to ask you a question. I know it's a sensitive subject for you. Um, yeah, he was a narcissist. Okay, I get that, you've told me that. Do you understand that when anybody is abusive toward anyone else, they always feel like they have a good reason? Like if you stopped them in the middle of their abuse and said, why are you being abusive? They tell you, and of course they would believe that they're right. But then if you ask the person 
who is being abused. Do you think that person would agree? I'm guessing nine times out of ten they wouldn't. They wouldn't think it's a good reason. The person who's being abusive is flying off the handle. Yeah. Right, exactly. But that doesn't mean that it's a good reason just because they're flying off the handle because... You imagine you're on the receiving end. Rem imagine that your ex-boyfriend was being abusive to you. He was abusive to me! And now... And now I can't date anymore. This, I can't, I can't, I'm, I'm thinking about dating women because men are fucking off the table for me. They're off the fucking table. All right. Okay. You probably don't want to date women just because you're wounded by your experiences with men. No, no, don't even say my experiences with men. I'm wounded by men. Men wound me. Men are assholes. Do you understand that you're actually... There's no other way to say it, so I'm just going to say it. You're really locked into a victim position here. Uh, hello? Hello? Yeah, of course I am. It's the patriarchy. The patriarchy? The patriarchy? Yeah. The system of oppression by men, white men. Oh, okay. So if I understand what you're saying correctly, you're born into a system and you're oppressed, and therefore, what? Therefore, men suck, sir. They suck ass. And I'm gonna date women. I don't, I don't think that you're going to be happy dating women. I, I just think that that's a way of... Uh, that's a way of continuing the cycle of blame. The cycle of blame. I was... I was born in the patriarchy. Just don't blaming everybody. This that's just the way it is. I'm oppressed as a woman. Okay. Now why do you even try to be with men? Why would you even do that? Because I'm straight. All right. Okay. So isn't being straight part of the patriarchy? Like, aren't straight people oppressing people who are not straight? Yeah. Yeah, that's probably why I have to be gay. <laughs> okay. And aren't gay people, though, aren't they oppressing trans... trans, uh, whatever? Transsexual people? Uh, or... Yeah, aren't they trans... aren't they oppressing other people? Maybe. Maybe I'll be gay for a while and realize that I need to be a transsexual or asexual. Mm -hmm. Do you think that maybe sometime in the near future, then whatever identity you choose will be oppressing some other identity? Because that's just kind of the way that reality is structured right now. Everybody is a victim. Yeah, everybody's a victim except for people like you. No offense. <laughs> None taken. I don't really subscribe to these perspectives, so I can't be offended by them. Yeah. That's exactly what someone like you would say. Totally avoid responsibility for your part. No. I'm a good man. And that is not changed by the color of my skin or my sexual orientation. Or the fact that I'm a male. I don't subscribe to any of these narratives that I'm the patriarchy or, or toxic masculinity. I don't do that. I don't live in those victim triangles. Victim, perpetrator, savior. Not for me. Yeah, because you have the luxury 
being part of the patriarchy to say that you're not part of the patriarchy. You are part of the patriarchy. No, I'm not. And one of the reasons that I'm not part of the patriarchy is I don't do all of this to myself. Oh, okay, we'll do what to myself? What are you talking about? I don't put myself in these cages and then wonder why I'm not free. What cages? Well, everything you're talking about is a cage. It's obvious you're very unhappy. You're the victim all the time. Your ex-boyfriend doesn't text you twice in an hour and all of a sudden he's a narcissist abuser and you have to see women for the rest of your life. It's such a really shitty way to live your life. Yeah, it's really bad, I must tell you. It's a cage and you created it yourself. And uh, you're not seeing that you hold the keys. But maybe after this kind of interview, and you're welcome to come back next week for another stipend, if you'd like, I think you're you're great. I mean, there's a lot that I'm learning here. Yeah. Okay. You see? You're really angry right now. Yeah. I'm furious. I know. You've got a lot of anger. And that's one of the reasons you keep on thinking you're a victim. But that anger is the one that pushes people away. Makes them leave you. And then you call them a narcissist or an abuser. And you hate men. The more angry you are, the more of a victim you'll become. Because you'll just keep on creating the same old cage where everybody out there is oppressing you all the time and you're always fighting a war with them and then when they leave you you can't see that you're the one who pushed them away you just can't see it and so you get angrier and you come in here and you try to spin circles around me with your great rhetoric and your identity politics all that philosophy and it's not making you happy still in your cage you're gonna try to date women now you don't you're not even attracted to women yeah there's a lot of sadness you can feel your sadness I can feel your anger do you really want to live the rest of this beautiful life with so much anger and so much sadness? You might as well just really get in touch with that sadness. Really feel it. And don't jump to the anger, you know. You don't have to. Life's too short to go around hating everything. Dating women when you're not even attracted to them. What's it gonna be next? You know, getting transgender. You're going to have to somehow turn yourself into a man because you've become so dis dissociated from that. So you're going to have to be a person. And then that will be their new identity that you can be all so upset about because people aren't recognizing you. And you can keep on fighting your whole life. Why don't you do that? Why don't you just struggle, 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 struggle? But... You're on that hamster wheel. You can get off. <sighs> I hate you. I hate you. You don't hate me. You don't know me. I'm just asking you questions and showing you perspectives. How could you hate somebody? You 
you've got so much hatred in yourself. I was abused. I have trauma. I know. But you keep thinking it's someone else. You're abusing yourself. No. Did you really have someone in your life who abused you? Was he your father? <laughs> yeah. He abused me. What did he do? <laughs> he beat me. Cursed at me. Criticized me all the time. Did he touch you? That way? Yeah. So you see how it works. That yes, there was an initial trauma. There was initial abuse. <laughs> yeah. And then you just take it into every relationship. But mostly with men. And you play out the same cycle every time. And it's obviously rooted in your upbringing with your father who was abusive to you. But you didn't heal that or cut that. You just keep replaying it. And then you wonder why it shows up everywhere you go. It's because you're taking it everywhere with you. You carry it like luggage. It's a baggage. And so the abuse is just projected in the sense that the wound is projected. Every man is going to end up playing the same tune. You're going to keep on getting broken hearts. You're going to keep on wanting to merge and bond and love men, you know? But you're not going to be able to because you keep replaying that script. And you get another broken heart. It's not abusive when a man doesn't text you twice in an hour. But if you haven't healed your relationship with the masculine, with men, with your father, then it... It's going to seem that way to you. It hurts. I'm waiting. I'm there with my phone, waiting for him. He isn't text. And my heart is broken. I understand that. But you're just clinging too much. You are too needy. I do not need him. Well, I beg to differ. We need each other. That's why we keep going after each other. That's why we keep getting attracted and form these relationships. We need each other. Just like we need healthy food. If you want to live a life where you thrive, And you're going to need other people. That's good, healthy food for the heart. If you want to just get by, you can keep eating McDonald's just because you need to live. And you can be single or you can just flip from one relationship to another relationship to another relationship to another relationship and never get that need answered. He broke my heart. I couldn't get out of bed for weeks. This is the first time I've really gotten out of bed to come do these interviews 
Please, I listen. Because I need money. You broke my heart. Right. We need people who can answer our heart. And we need to answer another person's heart. In other words, we need love. And we need to give love. If you don't want to do that, that's fine. But don't say the need doesn't exist. You just can get by with McDonald's. You can be single or you can have relationships where love is not really transacted back and forth. Transacted? Yeah, exchanged. Love is not exchanged. Yes, love is exchanged. There's a reason why you love this man as opposed to that other man. It's because this man fulfills certain conditions. And you fulfill certain conditions for him. And those conditions are the optimal conditions for love to be exchanged back and forth. And we need this. If we don't get this need answered, our life is a lot less. It's just like eating average food. McDonald's. That's the truth. And we need it not just with the opposite sex in a romantic, devotional sense, but with people in general. Sure, we can get by, but that just means the need is not answered. It doesn't mean the need doesn't exist. I want to get out of bed. What? Did I want... What did you say? I want... To get out of bed. Good. I want you to be excited about getting out of bed in the morning. I'm coming back next week. I want to come back even before. I want to come back. Well, definitely going to come back next week, okay? We're very happy to have you. We're thankful that you volunteered. Well, there's a stipend, of course, but we're thankful. I want him back. I know you do. Can I have him back? That might take a little bit of work. You've got a lot of... Well, you've got a lot of mental programs up here that uh, get you into a lot of trouble. Look what? <laughs> Love, tell me. I'll do anything. Well, there's a lot to untangle. Okay, what? What do I have to untangle? Oh. Well, the victim complex? You've got to really let that go. And it's connected to everything. You've got a whole philosophy around being a victim as a woman. You know? carrying a lot of anger but underneath that anger of course is a lot of sadness and so for next week we're going to talk about your sadness <laughs> I don't want to be sad for a whole week I know But it beats being angry for a whole week. Because when you're angry, you don't even know that you're sad. <laughs>